Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. I am so excited to be here with you on the FX Factory YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a plugin that I think is absolutely essential to every editor, and that is Add Motion. Animation in Final Cut Pro has been severely lacking for far too long, but Add Motion works to completely overhaul that process, and it makes it so easy that even if you have zero animation experience, you absolutely can use this plugin. Once you have installed Add Motion, you can actually find it here in your effects panel. And you will see we've got six options here, as well as there's some additional options up here inside of your titles. Okay, so let's take a look at the basics of animating with Add Motion. Now, there is one constraint that happens within Final Cut Pro. This is due to Final Cut Pro and not the plugin. But if I drag Add Motion on my base PNG icon, you can see how the edge is getting cut off. And that is because the FX Factory has a one by one aspect ratio over here, so it's just getting cut off at the edge. But to fix that is very, very simple. All we need to do is select the logo, push Option G, or you can also right click and select New Compound Clip, and we can just call this FX Factory Logo. And now we will no longer have that issue. I can drag on Add Motion, and the animation will play out just as it should. Now, if you're not crazy about using compound clips, you also can use drop zones. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in my titles, find my adjustment layers from FX Factory, and then I'm gonna locate the drop zone effect here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select my drop zone well here and select add motion. Then we'll just adjust the scale on this so that it fits within the drop zone and then we can adjust the scale overall. And now we can work with this just as we would with a compound clip, except for you also have the added benefit of being able to extend or shorten this clip out as much as you need. So all you're gonna do is apply add motion to whatever object you want to have the animation. Then you're gonna select the move type. So in this instance, it's moving from point A, which is the light gray one, to point B, which is the black point. So it'll move across the screen just like so. And you'll see how fluid and nice it looks. Now we can of course change the duration. So if we want this to take place over like three and a half seconds, we can absolutely do that as well. Now you can also change the takeoff settings. So right now it is set to linear. Let's go ahead and set it to back. So I'll play it. It moves back and then pushes forward to complete the animation. We can then of course also change the landing type which is set to exponential by default. I'm going to go ahead and set it to thud and you can see the animation play out here. Just like that it looks like it's almost bouncing against a wall. And of course we can change exactly where this animation plays out by moving the A and B points just like so. Now if we wanted it to go the other direction, we would just need to change it from B to A. So now if I play it out, it'll start in the bottom right hand corner and move to the top left. Next you have the option to change if the lock is set to horizontal, so now it can only move across a horizontal plane, or we can of course move it to vertical, so it can only move up and down. And then finally we can lock it to the B position. Now you might be asking yourself why is this useful? Well if we lock it to just the B position, then we can actually get into this next aspect, which is working with the rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the rotation panel down, and we can rotate it on the the Y parameter. So I'm going to drag that up quite a bit. And now you can see that it's going to rotate in place here just like so. And it retains that thud animation type and that back animation type. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this back to freeze. And so we can see that it's rotating from the bottom and then flipping up to the top. And you'll just see how amazingly dynamic that animation is. We can also change the depth type. So I'll change the depth on the B setting. We'll move it back in space. So it's moving from far away up forward in Z space, just like so. And then what's really cool with that is we can actually add some depth of field. So if we want it to initially start off out of focus, we can drag up this depth of field slider and it'll slowly move into focus just like so. As well as, you do have the option to actually change what's on the backside of whatever is flipping around. So we have the option to just add in a color, so I'll just drag up this color overlay, and we could make it a blue color if we wanted. So now you can see it's flipping from this blue color over to the logo face, 
or we also have the ability to add in a drop zone. So if I click this drop zone and select the add motion logo here, we'll push apply. And then after that, we're gonna need to actually drag up the drop zone opacity. And then you can see we have this super large PNG. So let's go ahead and drop the scale of that using the scale options. And we'll shrink it down so that it's about the same size as the other logo. So now the backside is the add motion logo and then it flips over to the FX factory logos. So that is a rough overview of what is in the basic add motion effect, but there's of course a lot of other options. The first of which we're gonna take a look at is the pop. So this just gives it a nice dynamic pop in just like so. I really love how this one looks. We can change the duration. We can change if we want it to actually bounce maybe. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now it's like a bouncing ball that's coming in. We can also reverse that. So if we actually want it to shrink down, we can do that just like so. We can change the scaling here. You can move the position around with the on-screen controls and you can also rotate it just like so. And then the next effect is the swing effect, which really brings in a lot of 3D dynamics to whatever you apply it to. So if I play this out, you can see it's actually swinging in 3D space just like so. And just like the other effects, it has the duration options, scaling, speed, all of that, as well as we can change it to be flipping around around a point. So just like so, we can have it flipping around a pole. If I play this out, you can see how it's kind of rotating as if it's on a pole. And then if you are happy with your animation type, you might want to add in some extra dynamics to make it look even better. First, we'll take a look at the motion blur. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the motion blur high. And you can see that as the animation is playing out, it's actually blurring the object as if it were a real object. So this is just one more way to make your animations look that much better. As well as there is this really fun motion blur type called X color trails. Now you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the trail length a ton and the echoes. You can see we get this really cool looking color trail behind our object. Now this is super computer intensive. Even on my M1 Max, it does make it tank a bit. So just be sure you are ready to render this out once you apply the effect. So just like that, we have this really cool looking color trails effect behind our object. So just looking at all those features, this plugin is absolutely worth it, but there is even more. If we jump over into the titles, we can see we have this text title, adjustment layer, pop and swing. So the pop and swing are just like the pop and swing animations over here. However, they already have text applied to it. And this one's already preset to a 3D title and it has this really nice dynamic pop in animation just like that. You have the same controls, so we can change this over to something like elastic, and it has all those same animation types. But then we also have the add motion text. Now this is just like the add motion effect down below. However, there's also a significant difference. And that main difference being the ability to animate the type on. So I can actually drag this slider. Now what I would use this for is if I wanted to animate text coming on as I was speaking it. So let's say I want to say something like, like and subscribe. Then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and record a quick audio bit. So I'm gonna push command option and eight to get the voiceover tool up. Like and subscribe, just like so. So now I can animate this coming in with each word. So I'm gonna drag this down to zero. I'm gonna go ahead, add a keyframe, come up to where the word is finishing, somewhere in here. I'm gonna add another keyframe, move forward one frame and then bring that up all the way until the like word pops up. And then we can go ahead and find where the next word finishes, add a keyframe, move forward a frame and then go ahead and write it all the way in. And then we'll find the next word, add a keyframe, move forward a frame and then bring it all the way up. So now, like and subscribe. The text is coming on as I'm speaking it. So this can be a really handy way to dynamically add in text as you're speaking it. But what's really great is this text can fully be formatted and it's still gonna retain that animation that we just added, as well as the ability to go ahead and animate it with the A to B. So it's sliding in and writing all at the same time. So one other really great feature that comes with this plugin is the built-in adjustment layer. So let's say I have multiple elements on the screen and I want all of these elements to go ahead and fly off the screen all at once. Well, you could go in and add your add motion effect to each individual effect, or you could bring in an adjustment layer just like this and bring your add motion effect to that. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and set this to B to A 
and then I'll go ahead and have this totally fly off the screen. So these pop in and then we want them to fly off. But you'll see that the background is actually sliding with it and that is where this really cool blend mode comes in. So I'm actually gonna take this gradient and bring it to the top of the screen. I'll disable this bottom one. So now everything is totally covered, but to fix that, select your gradient, go up into your blend modes and select the behind blend mode. So now this gradient is actually gonna be behind everything even though in the layer stack it's on top and there's a really great tutorial on this by Ryan Wellborn who actually made add motion so we're gonna have a link to that I think you can click whichever side I don't know where it pops up um, and and go watch his tutorial but this is just a quick overview so now if you play through we have these popping in and then they slide off together using this adjustment layer without needing to add in additional elements. So if we had even more of these logos popping in here, we had a whole screen just absolutely swamped with animations. They all pop in, they all slide out just like that without me needing to add in additional add motion presets. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing as I will be here so much more on the FX Factory channel. Also, make sure you pick up AdMotion down below, link in the description. With that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.